it's Candace, and in today's QuickBooks Tips and Tricks, we're going to go in and process payroll taxes. So before you do your year-end forms or your W-2, I always recommend verifying and paying your taxes. So the first thing that I always do before I pay my taxes, I don't just always assume that whatever QuickBooks says is correct. I actually go and look at the reports. It's what I teach everybody I work with on payroll. So employees and payroll, payroll summary, reports is at the top, employees and payroll, payroll summary. And then you're going to choose depends what you're paying. If you're going to work on the W-2s, you would choose the whole year. If you're paying your payroll taxes, which is what I'm going to teach you at the moment, you choose whatever time frame you're paying. So whether you're paying monthly or quarterly or after every payroll, just depends what you have set up. So I'm going to do last month, change it to total only. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print two copies of this. I prefer portrait and I print two copies. The reason I print two copies is I'm going to teach you the state of California. I don't know all the other states. Um, and I need one for federal and one for state. You can hear my printer is starting to print. Teach people to do is get out a highlighter. I, whatever colors you want. I use yellow for federal and I use pink for state. Then I go back down to reports, employees and payroll. I'll tell you what to do with the highlighters in a second. And I print liability balances. And I also will do that for the last month. And I print this as well. And you might say, Candace, why are you printing two of these reports? And I'll explain to you why. I usually do portrait instead of landscape. You're gonna print two, one for federal, one for state. The reason I have you print these is because you'll notice if you have any problems in your QuickBooks, it will let you know. So this is the balance. What you can do is you can actually look at this for the year. So you'll pick this last year, last calendar, and it'll give you month by month. All of these should be zero. So you can always check it that way as well, but typically only print the last month if everything is accurate. Now you'll notice that in December, there's a $42 credit. That's because I paid, already paid the 940, the federal unemployment tax. So what you also notice is your zero. What you wanna see is that your December and your balance, when you're looking at it for the year, we want those to be the same. The only difference is going to be that we already paid the unemployment tax. So this report, in comparison to the other report that I pulled, are these are different reports, and they come from two different places. The liability report, which we just pulled, actually comes from paying liabilities down here. And the summary that we pulled, employee payroll summary, this one, is actually what happened inside of the payroll. So one teaches you what's inside the payroll and one shows you what you said you've paid and they can vary if you haven't been doing, oops, if you haven't been doing it accurately. Let me accident click something, hold on. So they can be different if you haven't been keeping track. So then what I do is I grab my yellow highlighter and I go through both reports and I highlight all the federal 941 taxes, which are your federal withholding, your Medicare and your Social Security, both employee and employer side. I will not be highlighting the federal unemployment tax because that's technically a 940, not a 941. And the IRS wants you to pay those taxes different. I, when I work with people privately, a lot of times when they have payroll tax problems, it's because they don't know the difference between their tax types and they've been just doing them all the same on the report. All right, so since I'm in the state of California, I just told you what I do with the federal. I highlight federal withholding, Medicare and Social Security. I highlight the left side and I highlight the right. All right, now what I do is I grab a pink highlighter. Why I do pink and yellow, I don't know. That's just what I started with. Um, it doesn't matter what colors you use. So because I'm doing the state of California, now I'm gonna highlight California withholding and disability on my piece of paper. And I, yeah, I actually print the paper and I check it. And the reason I do that is I actually stick it in the folder every month to have a reference in case something ever gets changed. I know where things sit. I do it on both. And then I'll also go in and I highlight yellow on the federal withholding, red, pink on the, and since I printed two copies, one goes in each folder. Does that make sense? All right, so then the next step is paint it in QuickBooks and then also paint it on the websites. So let's go in and process the payroll payments now. The next step that I typically do is I actually go in and I physically add up 
How much are my two sides of my social security together? Because that's something you're gonna need. If you use everything on your keyboard, what you can do is you can do 124 plus 124. And then I write down the 248. So I actually literally write that on the piece of paper. And then I just write SS248. And then what I do is I also do my social security or I mean my Medicare, 29 and 29 in this example. And that gives me my number. And the reason you're doing this is because when you get in to do your numbers inside the EFTPS, you need to know what they are together if you put the information in. So I just do it right now and keep it super simple. And then the federal is just 128. I write those down. I add them up. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the time to check myself. A lot of times what people do is they just assume because QuickBooks has the numbers that it must be right. And I do the same thing on the state that I have. And so I'll know how much I need to, I'm writing these down, how much I need to pay. So now let's go in and I'll, we'll process the actual payments themselves. So you can click here on payroll liabilities or you can go up under employees. Either way, this menu doesn't really make a difference. Pay liabilities. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a custom payment. The reason I do a custom payment is typically drop this down to last month or whatever time frame you're paying for. The, tip, the reason I typically do this is because EDD, otherwise, if you do it through the other screen, let me show you real quick. If you go up here, you'll notice Right now, you can pay it all at once. The 49.86 was the total I came up with, and 434 was also the total I came up with. You can pay them here, but typically, EDD won't let you in the state of California. Not all your taxes will it let you pay monthly. So what I do typically is I go under custom payments, I pick my last month, I click OK. I choose the date that I wanna pay it. I choose which taxes I wanna pay. Even if these are zero, I just click on them. It equals 4986, which is what I said I wanna do. And then typically what I do, because I do it all at one time, I also go and I do the federal. So it's $434. And then I'll go back. I just kind of check them both, check and uncheck them. And then I click create. If you need them to be printed, that's fine, but we're doing EFTPS and on the actual websites for each place. So we're gonna create them. And then it actually takes you into the checking account. You wanna make sure that it's here under payroll liabilities. You never wanna pay your payroll taxes directly with a check. You always wanna pay them under payroll liabilities unless it's a penalty. So let's just say, for examples, I've had this question asked to me lately. If you had penalties, I don't know if I have penalties in this. Um, fees. Yeah, I don't have penalties in here, but um, you can add interest and penalties. And you add it in here, penalties, and then add it as an expense account. And what happens is, is if you pay it late and you have a fee that you know you owe, you put it to that expense account and say, let's just do interest. So I don't have to add an account at the moment. $10, let's just say that's what your fee is. What will happen is You'll increase this now by 59, only if you have a penalty, and you it'll still do your payroll taxes properly and account for the expense of your penalties and interest. You would choose a penalties and interest account. Only because I got asked, so I thought I'd include that right now. So I'm changing everything back to what it was, 49.86, 49.86. I've the check has been done. Now what you can do is you can go you can click the forward button right here and it'll take you to your IRS and you can check and make sure everything there looks good. You always wanna make sure you're picking the correct dates. What happens a lot of times when things get put into the wrong, you get negative numbers on your um, payroll liability balance is because you're not picking the correct time frame for when you're paying it. All right, so we're gonna click save and close. And now we're gonna actually go directly in and pay the taxes, so that's a step. So first, you you print the reports to see how much you actually owe. Then you go through, you highlight it, you check everything. Then you're gonna go in, you're gonna calculate it, pay the tax. Then you have now paid it in QuickBooks, but you still have to go pay it on the website. So we're gonna to go to 
the EFTPS website. We're going to log in and pay it. If you haven't set this up, it takes a few weeks to set up. So make sure you take the time. We're going to click make a payment and we are going to log in. Click log in once you put all your information in there. And then it's going to ask your tax form. And this is where I was saying to you that you want to choose the 941. The 940 is federal unemployment. So what a lot of people don't understand is federal 941 is your federal withholding, both sides of Social Security, both sides of your Medicare, right? You can come down here and you can choose your form, which it tells you right here, federal tax, federal unemployment tax. What a lot of people do is they include both their 940 and their 941 at one time. So they pay both their taxes at once. And the problem is the IRS doesn't know which tax type you're trying to pay and you'll have problems. So you can just do federal tax deposit with what I'm showing you. They have a lot of other options, but this is what we're doing. They prefer to receive their money through EFTPS versus, and you have to go through and give them your bank account. And one thing I learned is when I first logged in, remember there was a pin, whatever pin you put in is linked to your bank account. So when I change bank accounts, I thought I set it up right, but because I used my old pin, it didn't work a few years ago. So you're gonna put in the, oh, that's the federal, that's the state amount. We want the federal amount. So you wanna make sure you're putting in the federal information, which is your federal withholding, Social Security, and Medicare. You're gonna choose your tax period. You're gonna choose your year. So this is a year you're paying for, not the year you're in. Because of a holiday and because it's the end of the week, you typically need to make sure your payroll tax are paid on the 15th so that they're not late. It will tell you which bank account, make sure that's correct. And then it want, you don't have to technically put this in, but I always do so that I double, triple check myself to make sure that I put the correct amounts in. So remember when I added these up before, now this is where you're gonna put this information in. All right. And you may notice something I forgot to mention. When I was paying my payroll taxes, I have them broke out in my, when I wrote the actual check. Let me show you that real quick. I don't know if you notice, but you'll notice here it says each of my payroll items. When I set up payroll and I teach people to set up payroll, one of the keys that I teach is to set up each individual tax so you don't have problems later. So that's also one of the features that helps you make sure that you have everything in the right places. All right, so we've put in our amount. We're gonna click next. And now we verify all the information, what quarter we're for, that we're on the right tax form, the dollar amount, how we want it broke out, and we click make payment. The reason it's good to do this is because if you ever include, say, the 940, you'll notice that, oh, wait, that's not one of the taxes. Hmm, maybe I've done something wrong. Or if you accidentally pick up your state numbers instead of your federal numbers, you'll catch it right away. So click make payment. And then what we're gonna do is it's gonna give us a confirmation number. And I always print that. I'm still a paper person. You can save it as a PDF, but I actually print this. Let's see. And I attach it to my reports that I printed. So because people always ask me like, okay, well, what order do you put your papers in? I do the payroll summary report on top. Then I typically do the payroll, the actual confirmation behind it. And then I do the balance, payroll liability balance. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. And then I staple it and I put that inside of a IRS EFTPS folder. And then what I do is I have, you know, every, I do it, the, this is monthly. So then on top of that, I'll have my quarterlies. And so it goes three months, a quarterly report, three months, a quarterly report, right? Because for the 941, we have to do a quarterly report, which I will show you guys. I'm going to show you that right after I finish with this, but I will make sure it's in another video so that it, um, they're separate. All right. So now we're going to go in and I'm going to teach you how to pay the EDD. You can technically go back if you want to log, make sure you're logging out. You can click log out. Then we're gonna to go to EDD. Oops, I have one extra letter in there. If you don't know these website links, you can either look at what I've done or just Google it. This is for the state of California. 
I'm not a tax expert. As you guys know, I don't do taxes, but I teach QuickBooks. I'm an entrepreneur. So if any of this is different than what you've been doing and what you've been doing works, that's fine. I just wanted to show you guys what I do and what I teach. So you log into the website. We're under Employer Online Services. Username, password, login. I recommend inside your folder for your EDD that you put your username and password so it's easy to find. And they're always changing the website, but what it looks like at the moment is you come down and you click on the tax, employment tax here, and the company name that you're paying for. And then you go over and you pick the time frame that you want. And you'll see previous pending payments. It's telling me I need to refile my return, which it's not even late, but we're gonna click and make another payment. So we made payments each month for the previous month, right? So technically I'm making a payment in January for the month of, for the payroll that was done in December. Everybody has different, it depends how much you have in payroll taxes, will depend on what date you are gonna do it. So now you're gonna put in the amount of money that we added together. Remember I had you guys write that down. If you didn't do it, you'll understand why. They just recently changed this website. So you put in the amount, amount, the date you want it done. And then you are going to pick your deposit schedule, meaning when are you required? Is it monthly, next day, quarterly, or semi-weekly? It all depends on your in the amount of payroll taxes that you have and payroll wages and things. Then it asks you the pay date. So if you're doing it monthly, you just put in your last month. If it's quarterly, it'd be the last day of the quarter. If it's um, next day or semi, it'd be whatever payroll date. Then you're going to type in any of these numbers, it, whatever you owe. And if your payroll's low enough, you may not actually owe. Now remember, it's actually the employer training tax and unemployment. You only have to pay to the first 7,000. So since we're at the end of the year, we've reached our $7,000. So we don't have to pay that. If you have penalties or interest, you would put them in here. You notice that equals the 4986, the amount I said. If it doesn't, it won't let you submit it. So if it matches and you're good to go, you put everything in the right places, you hit submit, and you've paid your payroll taxes. The last thing that I do is I confirm it. Don't forget to do that. And print the page just to make sure in case you have any issues. It gives you confirmation number. And then I do the same thing. I print it and I stick it with my other papers and put it in the EDD file for the state of California. Then what you can do is you can just close your little screen, click OK, and we're gonna log out of our EDD website because we don't need to be in there anymore. So what you will do at this point is Take the time to process what I said. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you need personalized help with your payroll, feel free to check out working with me privately. I'll put a link up above, or you can send me an email, candice at candicecamfer.com. Either way, if you just click on the link, it'll take you to my website and you fill out the information or comment below. The reality is, is that there's a specific way to set up your payroll to keep from having problems. If you need help, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to receive my tips that I do about every other week, every week to every other week right now, feel free to go up to the I or down below and put in your information and they will be emailed to you. Thank you for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. The next video, I will put a link up above to kind of process through that. I'm going to do quarterly reports and the W-2 and a 1099. So I'll make sure down below and up above, I will try to put all the links for you. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye.